Welcome to Art Breaks and Gray! Hi everyone! For today, we are going to unbox a sushi bar from Semo Block Sakura Street Series number 601066. As I hold the box, I can say that it's quite light and can easily be held with one hand. The photos are also very clear and colorful. If you're wondering, Semo Block pieces are also compatible with LEGO pieces. You can freely mix and match them, though, if you are planning to sell authentic LEGO pieces in the future, it's best not to do this. In the main photo, you can see a sushi vendor holding his butcher knife, and on the other side you can see his pretty customer in a red floral kimono, eating all sorts of sushi variations. And at the back of the box, we can see different minifigures, and some vending stalls like, a takoyaki, or octopus ball stall, a milk tea stall, the same sushi bar, and a soup stall. The box is very easy to open, I just gripped one side firmly, and pulled a cardboard container inside, where all the pieces are sealed in separate plastic sachets. The cardboard box container is honestly something unique from Sembo Blocks versus the Lego boxes I have opened, and becomes really handy, especially if there are real small pieces that can easily roll away. In the box, there are four plastic sachets, one of which contains the stickers. The other thing that is included is the 18-step manual. If you're wondering, the price of this toy is more or less 8 US dollars. There are too many figures, or many people in this build. A girl and a boy. The girl wears a red floral kimono, while the male sushi vendor wears a white robe with some blue accents, and has a bandana in his head. In these symbol blocks occur a street series, there will always be too many figures being a boy and a girl, and both will come with different hair pieces, face prints, and really colorful clothes having patterns, on both the front and the back. The pieces are somewhat easy to connect, though the arms and hands were not already connected to the torso, like the minifigures from LEGO which had this already. I have to say, in this aspect, LEGO minifigures are more user-friendly to build. Now let's get on with opening the plastic sachets. For me, I would have loved it if the plastic sachets had those zigzag edges as it would be easier to rip open, rather than looking for a pair of scissors to cut it. Though I have to say that the plastic bag seems to be of good quality, it seals the pieces in perfectly, and it won't easily break. Another thing that differentiates LEGO pieces from Sembo Blocks or other LEGO-like toys, is that LEGO pieces always have the LEGO logo and those small dots, especially for base plates while the others don't. Now that I have cut out all the pieces, it's time to build. Step 1 is a little bit of a funny step. Basically you have to get a two-dotted concave, light olive, square symbol block piece and place it on the fourth dotted row and column of the rectangular base plate. I suggest to wing it and go immediately to step 2, which is an easier step and it won't compromise the build while you are assembling it. In this step, you will need to place your two dotted and four dotted light olive green pieces on the long side of the rectangular base plate, forming an inner rectangle or your inner bar. I really like the color of the blocks, and they are also very easy to slip into the base plate. For step 3, get the two long light yellow rectangular pieces and place one on the edge of the bar, and the other one right below to it. This will form the counter. For step 4, you would need to place two one dotted light olive pieces on both inner corners of the inner bar. Next, place three and four dotted light yellow rectangular pieces at the inner part of the counter, causing a sort of elevation. For step five, I would need to put these high heel like square and high heel like rectangular piece onto the elevated portion of the counter. On the left side, I place the white ones, then the red ones, then the yellow ones and finally the orange ones. But honestly, you can wing it and jumble up the pieces in any order of colors. Next, I place stickers on these pieces, again you can mix and match them as you please. I do have to say that the stickers are of great quality, they are plastic, which makes them less breakable, unlike those stickers that are made of paper. For step 6, you would need 3 cream colored 6 dotted rectangular pieces, 2 pale yellow rectangular pieces with a center dot, 6 cream colored rectangular pieces with a center dot, and 5 pale yellow rectangular pieces with with no dots on the surface. You will need to place them in a certain order. From left to right, place a yellow rectangular piece, with no dots on the surface vertically, 
Next place two cream colored, rectangular pieces with a center dot vertically, next to it, then place one pale yellow rectangular piece with a center dot horizontally. Do the same for a pale yellow rectangular piece with no dots on the surface. This will form a square. Repeat this pattern until you reach the right side of the counter. On the cream tiles, place a six dotted rectangular piece at the top. Do this three times. By the way, I wanted to ask, have you ever eaten in a sushi bar before? What was your favorite dish? Mine is California Maki. For step 7, you would need one long pale olive piece with 10 dots, and 12 round black pieces with no dots on the surface. Simply flip the counter around to show the inner side, and place the long pale olive piece, with 10 dots on top of the two square light olive pieces, with one dot. This will create a sort of bench. Flip the counter around again to face the outer counter. On the left six dotted cream rectangular piece, place four round black pieces with no dots on the left side, forming a square. I must place one but quickly placed it in the correct dot after a while. For the center six dotted cream rectangular piece, just place two round black pieces with no dots on the left side. On the right six dotted cream rectangular piece, cover all the dots with round black sembo block pieces. Then. Get the round sushi stickers and place them on the black round dots. They can be at any order. I really like the color of these stickers, they are very vibrant in person and very detailed as well. But since they're small they are a little difficult to remove from the non-stick paper and also difficult to place in the right spot. That is why I removed my gloves. For step 8, you need two olive high heel like pieces, three rectangular white pieces with two dots, three circular gray piece, one dark orange square piece and three one-dotted circle pieces. On the rectangular crane pieces, where there are no sushis place the rectangular white pieces with two dots on top of it. Next, place the three one-dotted gray circle pieces on top of the dots of the pale yellow pieces. And on top of those gray dots, place the circular gray pieces on top of them, forming cups. Then, tilt the entire piece to the right, and place the dark orange square piece at the corner. For step nine, you would need two dark orange rectangular pieces with one dot, two yellow rectangular pieces with no dots, one red rectangular piece with no dots and two dark orange square pieces. On the white rectangular pieces on the counter, place the two yellow pieces and the one red piece on top. Then place the yellow sushi stickers on the yellow pieces and the red sushi sticker on the red piece. Next, tilt the whole sushi bar to the left and place two dark orange rectangular pieces with one dot and the two dark orange square pieces on that side. For step 10, you would need five long dark orange pieces, three dark orange cube pieces, and two dark orange cube pieces with dots on the top and in the center of the cube. Just a side note, you might think that the color is brown, but if you see the pieces personally, you can see that it's dark orange. Now for the step. Simply place all five long dark orange pieces on the dots of the dark orange tiles on the floor. On the left, place the two dark orange cube pieces with dots on the top and in the center of the cube in the middle. And place the two dark orange cube pieces on the edge. On the right side, do the same, and place a dark orange cube on top of the long dark orange piece. For step 11, you need one long white rectangular piece, one dark orange cube piece, and one dark orange cube piece with dots on the top and in the center of the cube. For this step, you will need to place a cube piece on top of the pipe of the furthest end, on the left side. Do the same with the right side, but this time place the dark orange cube piece with dots on the top and in the center of the cube. Next, place the menu sticker on the surface of the white rectangular tile. If you get lost, just use the symbol block box cover to guide you. Once the sticker is attached, place this on the left side of the sushi bar. For step 12, you will need two long dark orange pieces, one dark orange cube with dots on the top and in the center of the cube, and two dark orange circular pieces. For this step, place the two dark orange circular pieces in the center part of the left side. Then place the dark orange cube with dots on the top and in the center of the cube, facing the customer side of the sushi bar. Then place the long orange pieces on the furthest side of the poles forming a sort of arch. I didn't really like this part, as the long pieces didn't have anything to lock them on place, since there is nothing in the middle to lock the two pieces together. For step 13, you will need one 5 dotted plate, two 4 dotted plates, three 2 dotted brackets and one dotted plate. 
all of which are dark orange. In this step, place the 1-5 dotted plate on top of the left side poles. This will secure the poles in place. Then flip the sushi bar to face the back part. On the middle of the arch, place the dark orange bracket in the middle. This will secure the arch in place. Though I find that it is still a little flimsy. For the two other brackets, place one of them at the far end of the left side, but make sure there is space for one dot. On the right side do the same, place a bracket on the far end but make sure there is one dotted space. My apologies on this part. I had to adjust the yellow wedge in the counter. As you can see, as I was trying to fix this but then the arch broke. I did manage to fix this right away. Lastly, place the one dotted plate on the edge of the left side of the arch. For step 14, you will need a cream rectangular plate with 16 dots, a dark orange rectangular piece with 6 dots, 3 dark orange brackets and 6 black circular plates. In the symbol box, you will also find a green floral cloth. Simply place the cloth onto the arch and with its holes, hook them on the holes of the brackets. Make sure that the printed part is facing the customer side of the sushi bar. To secure the cloth or curtain in place, pin the black circular plates on the dots of the brackets. Next, flip the sushi bar facing the customer side, and on the left side of the poles, place the dark orange rectangular piece with six dots on top of it. This will really secure the left side. I have to apologize, that I forgot to place two four dotted dark orange rectangular pieces on the arch. This was for step 13. When I did this step, the arch was still very flimsy. Continuing with step 14, I placed one bracket in the middle of the arch and placed the other two brackets on its side. Doing this really secured everything in place. For step 15, you will need two rectangular plates, two reverse brackets, two rectangular plates with one center dot and two one dotted square plates all of which are dark orange. For this step, place a one dotted square plate on the lowest part of the left side of the poles. Next, place a rectangular plate with one center dot next to it. And next to that place another rectangular plate with one center dot and finally place a one dotted square plate on the highest part. On the arch, place a rectangular plate on both the right and left side of the brackets. And on top of the brackets, place the three reverse brackets on top of them. This will form a rectangular shape in the middle of the arch with two rows of six dots. For step 16, you will need a long rectangular plate, five one dotted cubes and five one dotted square plates, all of which are dark orange. On the left side where the poles are, place four one dotted cubes on the dots, and place a one dotted cube on the right side of the arch. Then, place the one dotted square plates on top of them. Lastly, place the long square tile on top of the brackets. For step 17, you will need 3 navy blue square plates with 4 dots, 3 navy blue square plates with 2 dots, and 12 cream cones like circular tubes. Place the cone like tubes on the base plate, at the customer side of the sushi bar. Place them in such a way to form a 4 dotted square. There should be one on the left, one on the center and one on the right of the counter. Once you are done with these, place the 3 navy blue square tiles with 4 dots on top of the cones. Finally. Place the three navy blue square tiles with two dots on top of the blue squares. This will form the chairs or stools for the minifigures. For step 18, I apologize that I interchanged this step with step 17, but you can do this as you wish as they don't have any tiles connected to both steps or pieces that need to be placed for either one of the steps to progress. In this step, you will need two cream rectangular plates, one white rectangular plate and one long dark olive plate. For this step, I suggest that you look at the symbol box for reference to place the remaining stickers on the correct plate. Since the stickers were a lot bigger than the ones I used for the sushi, these were really easy to pull out. Once you get all the stickers on the plate, place the cream tiles onto the bracket of the arch. Next, place the long dark olive plate onto the front side of the poles, and lastly, on the right side place the white tile. This will complete your build. And there you have it. The completed sushi bar. I really enjoyed making this. In my opinion, the Semmo Block Sakura series has the cutest concept of traditional Japanese life, cuisine, and culture. Did you like this build? What else would you like to see in my future videos? I would love to hear from you. Here is the complete sushi bar build in different angles. By the way, if you have the time, please support this channel by subscribing, liking, sharing and hitting the notification bell.
This will really help this channel grow and thus providing you with more and better content. I hope you've enjoyed the Sembo Block Sushi Bar build. See you again soon. Thank you for watching.